Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jordan and today I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated releases of 2023. First off, I'm going to apologize for the background here. I don't have any other quiet space to film this in besides my bedroom and there's not really an appealing background. So this is gonna have to do. I am just popping up pictures though because none of these books are out so I don't have physical copies. So it, it works. It's fitting. But yeah, I have 13 books here to talk about today. I may do an updated version of this about midway through the year when books that are released later in the year are announced. But right now, I just have 13 that I'm very interested in checking out. So first off, I have Lost in the Moment and Found, which is the eighth, the eighth book in the Wayward Children series. This is released on January 10th, so only a week away, which I'm super excited for this one. I don't know if I want to purchase it immediately because the prices are very, very high for a book that's like 100 to 200 pages, but I digress. The Wayward Children series, if you don't know what it's about, follows these Wayward Children who have previously found their doors to these worlds that they find themselves in. It's where they belong and now they are back in the real world, real world, and struggling to come to terms with what they have lost, what they have left, or they're waiting for their door so they can return back to their worlds. Some of the books take place in these worlds, which those are also very fun. I think this is one of the books that takes place in one of those worlds and I'm super intrigued. I believe it's about a character we haven't read from before. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I'm super excited to check this one out. It's probably one of the books I'm interested in the most for this year. Next up we have Chain of Thorns which comes out on January 31st. This is the third and final book I believe, I'm pretty sure, in the Last Hour series by Cassandra Clare. And this is the sequel series I guess to The Infernal Devices. It follows the children of the main characters in The Infernal Devices. I don't really think I need to explain what the Infernal Devices is to you. It's one of Cassie Clare's most popular fan or most popular series in the Moral Instruments world. It's set in like the 1800s, steampunk London, those are the vibes. I've really really enjoyed the first two books in this series. Honestly I think they could be my favorite in the Moral Instruments Shadowhunter Chronicles. Cassie Clare just keeps pumping these books out and I'm gonna keep reading them because I need to know. I am not a person who can just not know and I can't just read a summary online but these books are so engaging, so captivating. It's like a guilty pleasure at this point. I likely will not, will never not read a book that she publishes in this universe. That's just where I'm at right now. I'm very intrigued to get to this finale and see how this whole story wraps up. The next book I have coming out April 25th is Happy Place by Emily Henry. To be honest, I don't know that much about this book. It's just written by Emily Henry and I have loved all of her adult books that she's published. So it's an auto buy. I think it could be about a lake vacation, a second chance romance. Honestly, I'm just throwing out things here. Here's the cover. It's pink. They look like they're at a lake and that's what this is based on. Similarly, we have Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, releasing on May 2nd. Again, I could not tell you much about this book whatsoever. I just know Carly Fortune wrote one of my favorite books of last year, Every Summer After. Wow, forgot the title of that for a minute. But I just adored the characters and the romance and the story in that book. So I'm intrigued to see what she's coming out with next, especially as Every Summer After was her debut, I believe. So I'm intrigued to check this one out and see how much I enjoy it. We have high hopes for this and Emily Henry's book. Also coming out May 2nd is The Sun and the Star by Rick Riordan and Mark Oshiro. You're gonna see it is a trend that I do not know much about any of these books. My main just and all I want to know going into this book is that it is Nico and Will's story. They're going on an adventure. Perfect. I absolutely adore the Percy Jackson universe. So again, I'm going to pick up anything, anything written in that world. I've enjoyed most of what I've read. The Trials of Apollo wasn't my favorite, but we're back with some of our original characters again, and I cannot wait to see where it goes. I absolutely adore Will and Nico, and I'm excited to see them interact some more. You're really going to see a trend on this list, again, another trend, of sequels. 
slash authors that I've read before. And that is what this list consists of almost entirely. And then releasing June 8th, we have Gold, which is the fifth and final book in the Plated Prisoner series. Is it the fifth? I believe it's the fifth. And I have a lot to say about the series. It is not exactly good, but it is a series that I cannot get out of my head. Since I have read all the books last year, I cannot stop thinking about it. The first book got a 2.5 for me, and honestly, most of the other ratings were not much higher, but it is a story that I literally cannot get out of my head. To give you a very basic gist of the first book, it's about King Midas and his golden beauty. This pers this girl who he has gold touched, and she is his prized possession. It's a King Midas retailing. I honestly don't even know how to explain the first book more than that, but honestly, from book one to book four, where we ended, miles and miles apart. So much happens, and it is so riveting. I really love the characters. The plot is so intriguing. The writing could be a little better, but just the story, I need to know what happens. I need to know where my characters end up. I just, I need this book so I can wrap up this series, I believe. I believe it's the final book. Don't quote me on any of this. Coming out July 18th, we have A Soul of Ash and Blood, which is the Goodreads says 4.5. I'm not quite sure where this fits into the story, but it's the next book in the Blood and Ash series. I honestly, again, know nothing about this book. I only recently read Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and since then I've been obsessed with this world. I'm currently reading the first book in the Flesh and Fire series, and I'm loving it so much. From Blood and Ash has a very similar press to Guild, now that I'm thinking of it, which is the first book in the Bladed Prisoner series. Poppy, our main character, is the maiden. Can't talk to anyone, can't be touched by anyone, can basically do nothing, but she is chosen by the gods. Things change, the mysterious hawk appears, and it's a fantasy romance. Again, like with the Plated Prisoner series, from book one to where I am currently at in the series, miles and miles apart. So much happens, and I love every single second of it. I love the characters, I love the story. The writing could use a little help sometimes, but I think these are self-published, and Jennifer L. Armentrout pumps out books so often. But yeah, this is the next book in that series. Since it's a novella, I don't know how long it's going to be. It could be 500, 600 pages like the other books. It could be like 200. I really know nothing about this, and I don't want to either because I haven't read War of Two Queens yet, so that is coming up soon, hopefully. The next book is The Brothers Hawthorne, coming out August 29th by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This book, I think it's like a spin-off, I don't know, it's in the universe of the Inheritance Games books of which I have only read the first one at this moment, but I loved it. And I currently have the second one, and the third one is on its way to me, so I'm going to hopefully binge read the series soon, and then I'll be prepped for the when this one comes out in August. I just absolutely love this world. I'm a sucker for a good YA mystery thriller, and that's exactly what this is. I'm sure you've heard it has major knives out vibes. Loved those. Perfect description of the book. Yeah, again, I don't have too much to say about this one because I'm not caught up on the series. What another trend! Super excited for August for this one. And then September 26th, we have The Chalice of the Gods by Rick Riordan, which is the next book in the Percy Jackson series, and I could not be more excited. I absolutely adore the Percy Jackson series. It's where my love of Greek mythology has come from, as I'm sure the same for most people who enjoy Greek mythology or Percy Jackson. I have no idea what the plot of this one is going to be, and I don't want to know. I think it follows Percy after the events of maybe the Heroes of Olympus series. I really am not sure. I just know it's the seventh book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, and I believe it follows them when they're older. Um, yeah, I just will read anything Rick Riordan writes, especially if the main character is Percy Jackson. Then October 10th, another one of my absolute top anticipated releases is Silverborn, The Mystery of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I read all three books in the Nevermore series last year and they all got five stars. I absolutely fell in love with the characters and the world. The world is one of my favorite fictional worlds I've ever read about and I love just being able to see more of that in each new installment. I would be happy reading just a book where Morgan goes and explores Nevermore. 
I no plot, nothing, just characters and world building. Would love it. Nevermore is a series that follows Morgan Crow, as I mentioned, who is there's a term for it, I don't remember what it's called, but like these children are very unlucky. They bring warlock to everyone around them, everyone who engages with them. And on even died I I need a refresher, obviously. But on the eve of her 11th birthday, I think it is, she is supposed to die. However, the mysterious Jupiter North comes and rescues her and sweeps her away to the world of Nevermore, where she partakes in these trials to gain entry into the Nevermorean society. One sock, the school. It has some of my favorite tropes in it. Just, I adore this series. It's on my top favorite list of 2022, not to spoil it, but it is definitely one of my favorite books of last year. And the last release that I have to talk about today is A Fire in the Flesh, which comes out December 12th, which is the third book in the Flesh and Fire series by Jennifer L. Armendrout. And similar to the previous JLA book I talked about, know nothing about this. As I also mentioned, I'm currently reading the first book in that series, so I haven't read the second one. I have no idea where this book is going to go, but I have fallen in love with this universe and I want everything I can get from it. If you can't tell from what I've said in this video, I'm a sucker for characters and world building. These huge intricate worlds where there are different series that take place in them and they're all interconnected. I love that. Give me more of that. But yeah, this is a book I'm interested to read this year, maybe. It does come out at the end of the year, so I don't know if it will be done this year, but it's one of my anticipated releases. So there you have it. All right, guys, so that's everything I have for you today. Those are all the books that I'm currently interested in reading next year. I don't think I've missed any. There will probably be more that pop up as I explore new authors and series in the next few months. Yes, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your most anticipated release for 2023 is. Let me know if any of these are on your list, and I will see you with another video soon. Bye!